What are we starting with this week? Is it a Wii review? That's very correct. Well <gasps> done. I got it right this yeah, week. Yeah, good job. <sighs> Look, you're you're slacking. I was deliberately not saying it because I was like, there's three or four different things it could be. It's not going to be a Wii review. <laughs> there's four <laughs> different things it could be. And if you pay Wii attention review. to the cycle, you'd know that it's a Wii review. Uh, no, so we're doing a little, a little tiny notes. Wii review this week uh, from Apple Podcasts. So if you head over to Apple Podcasts, even if you, even if you listen on Spotify, mm. head over to Apple Podcasts, leave us a Wii review. So... This one says, uh, you guys made me a podcast person. It's got five stars. Now, the review is, I came from Spotify to review. Very good. Ooh. Your guys' podcast makes science understandable and fun. You take the pretentiousness out of the science community, and I appreciate how very inclusive you guys are in every sense of the word in your science application slash analysis. When I had to drive with my cat in the car, he was the calmest he'd been ever been when I had Sci Guys <laughs> playing. <laughs> and that... That is confirmed to be because you're listening to us. Yes, scientifically speaking, canon. we cam cats. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for that, for that review. Uh, again, as I said, head over to Apple Podcasts where you can leave us a wee review. But, you know, if you listen elsewhere, just, just head over there anyway. Do it. Why not? What if you don't have a Mac or an iPhone? Oh, true. Steal one. Wow. Shall we start the show? <laughs> <laughs> Let's start the show. <laughs> Welcome to the Sci Guys, the show where we talk about the crazy, weird, and wonderful stories from the science world. I'm Corey, and as always, I'm joined by my co-hosts, Jamp and Luke Cutforth. And this <gasps> week, very special guest, Vigard. Hello! Wow. wow. This week, we're talking about mock meat. Ooh. Oh. Yes. In the vegan sense? In the vegan sense, yeah. Yes. In the vegan sense. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys know about uh you guys know about meat don't you you, you guys are aware of meat as a concept um <laughs> it, it plagues my eyes when i enter the, sh the, the supermarket i try to avoid it but i'm like oh, no. so anyway. meat yeah um so we all know about meat uh scientists are trying to come up with ways to make meat without the murder and we might have had uh, a breakthrough uh, in Ooh. you know sort of Ooh. recent years so i'm going to be talking today about lab grown meat or cultured meat uh, i love that because it sounds a little bit more cultured than uh <laughs> than traditional than meat. <laughs> <laughs> meat straight from the abattoir yeah so uh <laughs> just before we before we dive on in uh this is a kind of people think this is kind of a vegan topic but we'll get into why it isn't exactly um later on in the episode but uh just to just to to let everyone know we're all vegans aren't we more or less yeah well uh, i guess i'm a vegetarian but yeah i don't really consume that many um animal products yeah fair enough uh we should probably talk about what meat is in the first place you guys know what meat is flesh flesh that comes from animals <laughs> I mean, that we usually cook and eat <laughs> regard you got any any guesses <laughs> Um, I mean, that really says it, doesn't it? Just, um, I was going to say meat, but that's a little <laughs> yeah. bit of the question. Is well, it that, muscle? Well, no, it's, this is the thing. Uh, it's not, you guys are kind of close. So it's basically just the parts of animals that are used for food. Specifically, mm. the sort of definition I found said edible parts of the animal, but I thought that was obvious. Mm. Um, parts of animals used for food. So it's not just muscle, because obviously um, it's, it's usually muscle. You know, you usually use the muscle, but it could also be, it's also the fatty parts. You can also have, um, you know, delicacies like the eyes and the brain and the oh, um, kidneys and yeah, the testicles. testicles. Wait, does eyes mm -hmm. count as meat? Yeah, it's any and it's any sort of edible part of the animal. Mm. Really, is meat. Uh -huh. So yeah. then, bones That's are disgusting. meat. The bones aren't really edible though. <laughs> but dogs eat bones. Yeah, but the... and Haribo is consumers eat bones. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay. So it's gelatin it's also meat. Sometimes oh my God, this is like that scene. stuff left in the meat. Would that count? Yeah, tendons and stuff count. This is like okay. the scene in, in The Inbetweeners where it's like, <laughs> our shadow is made of atoms. <laughs> oh yeah, outnumbered. Yeah, like, it's, what, are, what are atoms? Everything's made of atoms or shadow. Yeah, oh my Lord. <laughs> no, but it's, it was, someone sent us that meme a while ago where it was just, out, it was outnumbered. It was Karen from Outnumbered asking questions <laughs> yeah. and they said it was Psy Guys uh, and yes. Luke was Karen and that is so spot on uh, the well, only time I'll just... be happy to be called a Karen <laughs> <laughs> uh, so no uh, yeah, meat is uh, parts of animals that are used for food usually the muscles and fat um, and the reason that meat is so good um, 
depending on what you mean, depending on what you want good to mean, is that um, it's a complete protein food. It gives basically you all of the amino acids that you need um, to be a living human body. Mm -hmm. Because the thing about humans is that we we need amino acids. Those are the building blocks of proteins, uh, but we can't make all of them in our body. So we need to get them by stealing them from other things that already have them. They've basically. already put in the work to eat all the nutrients. Yeah, they have. They have put in the work to get those amino like, acids. And we're just for like, doing that. All right, stab. Yeah, I'll take it from you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at this lovely cow I've raised to uh, to to build amino acids for me. Would be a shame if uh, somebody mm, ate him. How convenient. A complete package. <laughs> but yeah, uh, parts like your uh, sort of livers, kidneys, hearts, um, and all of that other stuff. Um, basically those organs uh, are very good for vitamins and minerals. Um, and the great thing about meat is that there's a high bioavailability in that um, they are they come in a form that you can easily uh, sort of add into your body. Mm -hmm. uh, because th the thing is that uh, this is something that I don't think is really taught very well when it comes to nutrition is that it's not just the, sh it's not just the sheer amount of the thing that is in the food that you're eating. It's about how readily your body can utilize that. Mm -hmm. So if you've got something with a low bioavailability, basically what that means is that it's not in a form that your body can uptake very well. So it would need to convert it into a form that it could. So it would probably be better to have something potentially with a lower uh, total amount, but a much higher bioavailability mm. than... Is that why like even versa. when there's like vegan proteins, it doesn't necessarily mean you're getting like the full amount. It's yeah. because you can't take it out. So it doesn't even... You have to eat a lot more protein. Yeah, it depends. Yeah, with with some vegan proteins, it can be. It can, they're not. Yeah, they're not necessarily as bioavailable. So you've got to eat more. But um, with with others, that's not the case. But with meat, the, the good thing with meat is that because it's, I think, basically because it's already been used in an animal that is fairly mm -hmm. similar to us. It's basically in a form that our body's like, yeah, I know how to use this. Yeah, cool. Sound. Um, and yeah, you've got uh about. So generally, 95% of uh, the protein in meat um, and about 96% of the fat in meat are digested. Uh, and because it's, meat has generally got quite a high fat content, especially mm -hmm. in comparison to other foods, you know, um, or animal products in general have got a higher fat content. Um, they, which fat basically slows the digestion of other foods. So what that means is that meat can help you feel full for a relatively long time. So meat is, when you think about it as a food, it's pretty good. I mean, and the thing is that like, you know, a above like pretty much all else um when it comes to what humans want to eat mm. it is meat because it is it is a really good food it's got everything you need uh and it's very good for you um so we really want usually we really want meat mm -hmm. but obviously the amount of the population that we've got right now we've got about what seven billion eight billion eight billion people on the planet nearly seven billion I can't remember. nearly eight I'm pretty nearly sure. eight too many well, it's not necessarily <laughs> That's the correct answer. Too it's, many. It's not necessarily that there's too <laughs> no. many people. I think the issue is that we have we've basically as a culture we have started to eat more and more meat. So, uh, like the amount of meat that we eat in the UK is uh, it's increased quite rapidly. Mm. So you know we, we have meat, uh, some kind of meat usually uh, in every meal. You know, apart from breakfast probably, but um, generally in the UK diet you you'd have meat. Um, as the sort of center of every meal, mm -hmm. but that wasn't the case. We spoke about that in our Veganuary episode yeah. a year ago. Um, that's not that's not been the case um, for as long as you would think. And this increased sort of demand for meat um, has has led to horrible, horrible farming practices. That uh, there are so many reasons that you can look at the, our current state of farming and not like it, from the environmental impact to the actual sort of treatment of the animals mm. uh th th any number of things it's also the fact that processed meats can be quite bad for you They're, um they can increase your risk of heart disease or certain types of cancer mm. so yeah meat is good it's good for you like it's undeniable that meat is good for your body but also meat is bad for you too and especially in the quantity quantities that we eat it and the way that we're producing it it is terribly terribly damaging to the planet Mm. Um, cows just belching out methane, adding to uh, sort of global warming. <laughs> it's uh, not ideal. I don't know how true this is because I read it quite a while ago, but I heard that um, your daily intake of red meat is meant to be like, it's recommended to be like 30 grams. Something like so small that no you, no dish is ever going to have just 30 grams of red meat. Oh no, I, yeah, I think, um, I don't know about the specifics on that, but yeah, I, yeah. we eat far more meat than we need to yeah like strictly need to i mean 
actually, yes, everyone eat far, eats far more meat than they strictly <laughs> need to because you, you don't need to eat it. And that's, that's what's really interesting. Obviously, um, you know, um, if you're an evolving species or if you're in a, in a position where, um, so it, let's let's put it from the very beginning. If you're an evolving species, uh, before you've invented sort of uh, agriculture and whatnot, you basically you have to eat meat because it's the easiest way to get that sort of um, food source, mm. that sort of protein source. But uh, as we kind of like you know, um, as you sort of evolve as a species, and then beyond that, as you sort of grow economically, you can supplement your diet with other things. And specifically, we're at a point where like if you've got if a country's got more money. Uh, it is far easier to go to be, to go vegan, essentially. Mm -hmm. Although um, meat substitutes have existed for a long, long time. Most of them coming from soy or from wheat. So you've got tempa comes from wheat, and you've yes. got tofu from soybeans. Uh, soybeans. Yeah, soybean curd. Uh, but yeah, uh, advances. Sort of, we've we've basically had a lot of um, advances in technology for making um, fake meat in the past uh, in the past few decades. So on top of on top of the sort of um, Meat substitutes like uh, tofu and tempeh. Uh, it's not tempeh. Tempeh is tempeh. Uh, soy tempeh, but it's seitan. I meant seitan is <laughs> that's the gluten. That's the wheat one. Wheat, yeah. 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 Tempeh yeah. is also wheat. Is it? Okay, good. Yeah. Right. Oh, cool. So I was similar correct. to similar to um, similar to seitan. Yeah. So there's uh, I think there's uh, basically there's proteins in wheat, mm -hmm. and so you're basically just you can make it at home from. Sorry, I'm wrong. Tempeh is a soy product. Yes. Oh. I was wrong go. and then I was right. Okay, so you've got uh, you've got tofu and tempeh. <laughs> tempeh, whatever. You've got tofu and the other one. Um, <laughs> those are both uh, based based on soy, um, which uh, has, I think, it, it is itself a complete sort of protein source. It also has all the amino acids that you need. Yep. And then you've got uh, seitan, which comes from wheat. And that's basically, you can make that at home from flour. Uh, you basically just need to, um, and I tried it. It's you should use specific flour that is for it, not just any flour, but yeah. you can do it. <laughs> um, you can bas you basically just sort of rinse, rinse the flour um, like, out, out, like out um, so that you're basically just left with the protein. Mm -hmm. You just got to sort of rinse it, squeeze it, rinse it, squeeze it sort of thing uh, again and what? again and again. Wait, how? <laughs> you can, you basically kind of dissolve away all of this, all of the stuff that isn't protein and you're just left with the protein. Oh, because there is there is a fair amount of protein in wheat, um, but it's hmm. it's a you're, it's much easier just to buy it from the shops. Okay, yeah, don't make it at home. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we we've had those ones for I mean long long time like centuries. But um, we've kind of tried to move more into making um, plant based meats that are more meat like in recent years. So mm. there's things like corn, which is based on mycoprotein, and we've basically kind of used pro proteins from other uh, sources from plant sources to try and try to kind of like make them similar in taste and texture to actual meat. Um, I get kind of grossed out when I start thinking about um, corn meat and like how it's actually made. So I have to just like kind of disconnect whenever I eat it. I'm like, no, I'm not going to think about this like mushrooms growing in a lab somewhere. Really? <laughs> like, <laughs> for some like reason, it, no, mushrooms really, I, I can't get past the fact that mushrooms like grow and stuff when it's like dying and decaying and stuff so i can't do mushrooms I mean, and yeah fair I enough i mean but plants do the same they just wait till stuff is more dead i know it just looks prettier i think it's just that <laughs> mushrooms look nice. it's just a flower looks like nice but a mushroom it's just it looks like something moldy i don't know <laughs> I mean, it is no, it is something that. moldy, isn't it? It's yeah. basically just it's a big mold, it's a big lump of mold. It's a big lump of mold. <sighs> um, yeah, no. Um, when I found out about how corn was made, I got very excited and I liked it more because I was like, "Oh, that's cool." You're a nerd. I am. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I got told in high school that corn was uh, mycoprotein. That it was. So basically, I'll, I'll explain to you what corn is. Um, so uh, for all those that you. For all, you, for all of those of you that don't know, corn is generally, um, it's, it, well, it's a mycoprotein, which means that it's um, um, a protein that is made from a specific sort of fungus. So um, I think it, I think the, the type of fungus is uh, Fusarium uh, venen, venenatum. Um, and basically it was found in the wild and then it was kind of made specifically to be used uh, to make um, protein for mm. food. Uh, so basically what you do is you just kind of um you just kind of grow 
this fungus um, without oxygen. Um, it's, you just let it ferment, essentially. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, this is, this is just cool. the okay. word. This is what I studied fungus. at uni. Okay, like I am okay. so into this. Uh, you let you let the mushroom just grow. Uh, you get the let the fungus just grow for a bit, um, and then it starts to produce sort of. It starts to produce uh, all the stuff that it. Um, it starts to produce sort of protein, and then you uh, you treat it with heat to get rid of the um, RNA because there's a high RNA content in it, mm-hmm. and that can be bad for you if you have too much RNA. Bear in mind, RNA is like uh, DNA's half sister, um, cousin. <laughs> 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 and then um, you you sort of process it some more, um, and then you're um, you've got to centrifuge it and basically uh, get rid of um, get rid of uh, sort of all of their products and you're just left with basically a, a protein paste mm. which is 75% water so you've grown your you've grown your fungus it's grown your proteins you've uh, heat treated it to get rid of the RNA and you've separated it out from all of the other stuff and then you're left with a, a wet protein paste um, and that, at that point uh, you've got to then basically kind of shape it into the meat and give it that texture and all of that <laughs> stuff. It's I think it's really cool. I think it's cool that we make meat. Uh, make, we make fake meat from. Um, I just like that we just commit to it and spend all that extra time making it look and feel like meat. Well, yeah, that's that's a, that is a big that is a big big issue. The only reason that um that we've got cultured meat, the reason mm. that we've got this lab grown meat, is because people are very stubborn when it comes to yep. switching food and like not in a bad way. I just mean like this is something that is well known. People generally don't like the idea of artificial foods. Yeah. Generally, which is why you'll, if you think about corn, right? They don't advertise very, like, they don't hugely advertise that it is protein grown from a fungus. Mm. When they advertise no, it, they've got but more they far- have to say it because some people are really allergic to it. Like I had a mm. friend who like ate like corn, didn't know anything about it and was like so sick from it because it's oh, like goodness. he was the, the 1% who's allergic. Yeah. But so that's, it's so strange. I have to like put like that in the brackets that it's like fungus and it can be, you can be allergic to it. Yeah, they do. So they like, yeah, they do say it, but like, you know, they don't, it's not like, it's in their adverts. That's not a. That's not a. They downplay like that hugely. Fungus. Yeah. Yeah. Like, look at our this. mushroom meat. No, you've got Mo Farah running around, and they're saying, "Hey, try this healthy alternative to meat," as opposed to being like, "This is this is vegan. It's you it, know, it's, you use it's it, vegetarian you use it as meat. It's made yeah. from mushrooms. Have fun." Exactly. Um, but yeah, it's really. I don't know. It's just really interesting to me that um, we we have substitute substitutes for meat, mm. and right now we are growing a bunch of food. Uh, in I think in some cases we're actually growing like soy to feed to uh, to feed to animals to then eat ourselves when we could just be like why don't we just cut out the middleman just cut him out get rid yeah. of that cow let him go live uh, let let her go live by herself doing her cow cow stuff and we'll just eat we'll just eat the food that we're growing for that cow you know um, but yeah so obviously because people don't like to change what they're eating um, and they're kind of like sort of resistant to sort of lab grown stuff mm. um, w- because they're sort of resistant to m- meat substitutes that aren't incredibly meat like. Yeah. We've had to kind of come up with um, ways of making meat that uh, that are both sort of more environmentally friendly and also uh, less uh, harmful to animals essentially. So that's where cultured meat comes in. So what, what do you guys know about cultured meat? What have you heard about it? Not much. I've just heard that it's like, I have literally just like seen a picture of a scientist and it's like a like i've just heard that it's grown in a lab and they take like some piece of an actual animal or something and then they like grow that from like that one little piece or something that's basically it mm. yeah yeah that's essentially that's essentially what it is so how it how it works is it's it's basically meat grown in a lab using um animal cells so this sort of started um, way back in the 1990s, um, but then it was more around sort of 2013 that it really started to gain traction. Mm. Um, and that was that was around about the time that they they gave a burger um, that was a lab grown burger to a journalist um, live at a press conference, um, and from then on it would kind of it kind of really exploded. So. 
not the burger, it did not literally explode, but the, the, <laughs> field, the field exploded. So you, you then had it like, it, you know, you then had more people sort of investing in it and sort of uh, investigating. But at that point, that burger that, um, that they gave to the, um, that they gave to the journalist, apparently it cost, I've heard anywhere from about $250,000 to about $300,000. I had $250,000. Yeah, so I, I, I so I've, $250,000, let's say. Um, and apparently it took three months to make. Oh, wow, that's less time than it takes to make a cow. <laughs> yeah, okay. But it, it, okay, but you also, no, because you need to make a cow first <laughs> to get the, the cells to grow your meat from the cow. I don't want to be doing meal prep three months in advance, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Technically, you don't. I mean, you could just take this, the embryonic stem cells of the cow. So you and then could use do that. that as well. Yeah, true. So you don't need to make a whole cow first. No, you, you could just take that bun before it's, you know, out the oven before it's done. Um, so but yeah. wait, uh, did they only manage to make one in three months? Like one burger? I think they made more, probably. Okay. I think they... Uh, I, <laughs> I don't I know the like, specifics, a... <laughs> but I think the point the point of the story, Corey, is um, I think the the point of like why that was a problem and why it was so expensive is because they weren't producing this in a mass scale. So that right. one of the it's like it's like one thing is to develop the technology, another thing is to scale it up to mass <laughs> mass production, which is another whole problem. Yeah, this, this, so this is another thing that I did at uni as well. So when you're talking about uh, these kinds of processes. Um, Essentially, what you've got to do first, like Luke said, you've got to kind of get the proof of concept. So you start small. You start with basically a pilot system, which is is tiny. Like, you know, if you think of if you think of the sort of bioreactors, the kind of vats that they grow stuff in, um, now like uh, at a commercial scale, they are huge. If you think mm. of the vats they use, for example, in making beer, th the vats that they use that for, they're huge, massive things. Um, when you when you look at when you're sort of trying to figure out a process uh, before you scale it up, it's it's tiny. Like you could mm -hmm. fit it, like you could fit it on a table. Usually, it's very it's a very small thing. So, um, yeah, they started off with like obviously very small, mm -hmm. and the trick is to hammer out the the fine details of the process, and then to make sure that you're able to scale it up efficiently. Mm -hmm. And there are so many problems that you can come into come into when scaling up that. It's it's honestly it it sounds like it should be easy. You just put it in a bigger thing. Yeah. But it, it's really not. You've got to think like this is something that I had to study for three years. By the way, you got to think about mixing. Like the amount of the amount of time I spent in university learning about mixing and its effects <laughs> on bloody microorganisms. You got to think about the mixing of it. You got to think about um the sort of temperature how you keep it um how you can be consistent throughout mm. um, the harvesting, yeah. the adding in of the sort of um, adding in of the components, how often, like, like how often you clean it, how you can clean it. If you've mm -hmm. got to completely empty it out um, to make sure it's, it, it's a lot. And especially because this has got to be food grade stuff, mm -hmm. th the standards for it are super, super high. Whenever you're making something for human consumption yeah. um, or like sort of drugs for humans, if it's going into a person, the standards on that are, like through the roof, they are very, very strict on um, yeah. sort of the safety of it. How accurate is it to like? Well, it's I guess it's literally real meat, but like, no. is it exactly the same? No. Like how? Okay, <laughs> because that's what's confusing to me. Because it's like it's like from a cow or whatever, what? but like, is it really the same? Not really. So. Look, I'll, I'll kind of explain how they make it, and that'll probably answer your question. Yeah. Um, that'll probably answer your question uh, better than just saying what the answer is. Um, so essentially, when it comes to lab-grown meat, the, the process is, um, you basically need to start with stem cells. So stem cells, by the way, are undifferentiated cells, essentially. So they can uh, turn it... So with your cells, they've all got very specific sort of um, purposes. You know, a skin cell does skin stuff, a blood cell carries... <laughs> oxygen around does blood stuff yep. brain cells do brain stuff you know they do but you, if you were to put your uh, sort of brain cell in your bloodstream it's not going to start doing blood stuff it doesn't know how to do blood it's going to try to do brain stuff no it's just going to try and do brain stuff because yeah. it's a brain cell yeah. uh, but stem cells can turn into any <laughs> can turn into um, almost any kind of cell essentially um, they're undifferentiated and they've got the chance to basically grow up to decide what cell they want to be mm. um, so <laughs> doing their GCSEs <laughs> making a career path <laughs> they grow up so fast yeah exactly so uh, you basically take stem cells now you could take stem cells from an embryo um which is basically you know a fertilized egg mm -hmm. that is grown a little bit 
to be not a fool animal, you know, or, you know, depending on what you believe with abortion, it could be a fool animal. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> going to judge. Um, <laughs> so you, you take, uh, you take stem cells either from an embryo or you can take, um, you can take, uh, cells from, uh, a grown animal because fully grown animals still have some kinds of stem cells. Uh, and then you, no. um, yeah, go on. Wait, sorry. Do the vegans have a problem with this though? The like intense vegans. Vegans? Well, I'm like, fine, I mean, but I don't speak for all vegans. There's, I'm, I'm sure there are some vegans that are like, well, if we're taking cells from animals, that's still exploitation. I'm sure there's people that say that. Yeah, but if let them die out. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> let them die. I don't care, man. Like, gee. You can miss out on the great vegan meat. Like, <laughs> man, like, bro. More I, for me. It's, it's, come on. If you, right. <laughs> would you rather, would you rather we have it in the, an industry where like if hundreds of thousands of animals are slaughtered or would you rather we just take some cells from some animals <laughs> and stop them like come on if this that is a vegan step teacher to make, is typing yeah like but if we if this is a step to making the this is what this is what bugs me oh my gosh i knew this would happen um <laughs> this is what bugs me about vegans we've man we've set them off we've set them off is that it's like bro okay I know your goal is for everyone to be vegan, mm -hmm. more or less. Obviously, there are sort of indigenous tribes and other countries where that that's not going to be the case based on lifestyle, whatnot, whatever. But I know your goal is generally for pretty much everyone to be vegan. Do you not think that maybe trying to get there in a few steps, like trying to trying to trying to get there in like maybe six or seven steps, is better than trying to <laughs> leap it all in one single bloody bound? Like, yeah, the aim should be to slowly make veganism seem more accessible. Yeah, make and it to make to make it more accessible and to seem like a better option. Yeah, like in know, the five years yeah. since I moved to London, it's become more and more accessible to the point where like every like okay, literally pretty much every place I can order food from at my house, it's got a vegan option. Yeah, it's totally fine. I can go in, I can comfortably walk around London and walk into most restaurants and be like, yeah, I'll have a vegan option. Even the bloody Thai place that I like, this like bloody Thai takeaway place, like sort of restaurant. That I that in, in sort of central London, I can just walk into it and I'm say I say, hey, can I get this? And like, oh, the vegan one, yes, go ahead. Like, I mean, in go, fairness, I've I been was to Thailand actually there and for there like was so much vegan food in Thailand. It's amazing. Really, I just yes, mean so much. If, I'm sure. To be fair, I'm sure there is. I just feel like you got to remember that, like, when I say Thai food, it's not Thai food. It's it's like British it's like Thai food. Britain's idea of Thai yeah. food. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like, I, I was actually in my city, I, like, because I come from a very like small town in like fucking nowhere norway um i thought and you said N norway or norway and i'm like do you know no. where you come from <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> no one would know this place basically it's like tiny and i was when i became a vegetarian there was like maybe literally one thing in mm. like the frozen section that was vegetarian and not even vegan and then throughout the like years because we just had to make all the stuff at home and then like throughout the years i was vegetarian suddenly like there was like a whole freezer for it and then a whole fridge section mm. and then uh, two fridge sections and it was like a really interesting thing to like be seeing that change yeah it's so mm. cool i mean even in the time since um like, since i've lived since i've lived here so when i first moved in um i'd basically just gone vegan and the shops closest to us were like it's fine they had some stuff they, they had tofu they had tofu they had yeah. tofu um but then nowadays they've got They've got vegan sausages, like very good vegan got sausages. Shroom, yeah, the shroom dogs are. Yeah. Oh, they've got the amazing. new sort of like, uh, like, like actual proper sausages. Mm -hmm. uh, they've got vegan cheese, vegan butter. Like they've got, you, you can, sh can like comfortably shop there mm -hmm. and be t perfectly fine being vegan. And I think that's great. I think that, I think that the sort of way to get more people to be vegan is not to be a militant sort of, if you if you eat animals, you're a bad person, the kind of thing. And I think there is a place for the sort of I think there is a place for the guilt. You know, I like this sad but I think there is a place for the guilt because honestly, I, I even read a study on this. We like to sort of separate um meat from murder. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. all the time. We 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 like to separate meat from the killing. Um and it, I I don't think it's bad to show people, hey, these are the these are the conditions that are, are making your bacon sandwich, sort of thing. You know, because yeah. If they feel bad about that and they want to stop eating meat, then good. Like you can't just ignore where yeah. it comes from. You know what I mean? Um, in the same way that I think if you were to show people the conditions of like where their iPhones are made and they suddenly decided, oh, I don't want to buy an iPhone anymore. Fine. Yes. 
like that you're not a bad person for doing that however i do think the sort of militant um uh very strict if you if you eat meat you are invariably a bad person mm -hmm. i don't think that's helpful and i don't even think it's that really mindset all just that breeds <coughs> the strong anti of that yeah so it's like strong anti-veganism for no rational reason exactly whereas i feel like if you're if you're someone that is um that tries that mm -hmm. says that say has like tries to eat vegetarian um and eats vegan sometimes or has a couple days a week where they try and eat vegan or even like you know every now and then we'll take that option then that's so much better than just eating meat all the time or even just reducing your meat intake or stopping eating, like cutting down on red meat. Anything that you do, any sort of, um, any change you make to your diet to limit animal products is a good thing. That is mm -hmm. that is great. And I think the, uh, sorry, I think the thing is that once, you, once you're vegan for a while, once you stop eating sort of meat for a while, and then once you stop eating animal products altogether for a while, you realize that you don't really need them. Like there's always, uh, every single sort of um, vegan person I've spoken to, there's this switch that happens um, at some point in their life where at the start they find it really difficult. They think, oh man, this is such a slog. It's so restrictive. There's mm -hmm. so much I can't eat and it's so difficult to do this and that. And then suddenly at some point down the line, they change their mindset to where they stop thinking of animal products as food. And suddenly they're like, oh, I was limiting myself by mm -hmm. thinking of animal products as food. Whereas now I don't think of that. I can do anything with what's put in front of me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Go from I wonder if Corey, from your research on gut microbiomes, is there anything that might be um, something like the, the the microbes in your gut that are specifically specialized at digesting meat, and they just sort of die off, and then that changes a, a change in like creates a change in your desires? Um, because if you have these things that are going meat, 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 and that slowly goes, obviously there could be just a, a thing in your brain that switches and slowly, like your 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 training system, the reward system changes. But I wonder if there's a, a microbiome thing as well. No, um, probably. So, okay, based on, I love that you say, uh, based on my research with the gut micro, uh, with gut microbes, as though, as though I've been sitting doing that. No, um, <laughs> working on his PhD. <laughs> no, just to be clear for the listeners, uh, based on my reading, I did, I did a dissertation on it. Uh, based on my reading on that, uh, <laughs> that's research. No, I know, I know. I just don't want people listening and thinking that I've, that I've done. You've sat in a lab it. with some guts. Yeah, <laughs> I was trying to big you up there, Corey. You've, you've ruined he has it. Yes, to knock himself down. I can't. Look, I don't want. I don't want people thinking that highly of, highly of me. No. Um. So based on what I, based on what I know, that makes that make that could make a lot of sense. There is interaction between. There's the gut brain axis. There's interaction between the microbes in your gut and your brain. So absolutely. Um. Sort of. Uh. Microbes that are more geared towards digesting. Um. More of the products you find in meat could potentially. Um. Like sort of die off and send and have less of a signal effect on your brain. That that's. That's a very plausible hypothesis, I would say, Luke. Um, Thank you. But the, the thing well, is that actually, no, sorry, I, th I think the thing is that actually with with meat, like I said, it's high in fat and it's high in protein. Those are two <coughs> things yes. that generally, if you're surviving, those are hard to come by. So that's why if, you, if we were talking about this in, their in the taste episode, things taste good because your body needs them. Mm. Sugars taste good because they're an instant source of energy, basically. Um, fats taste good because they are a great energy store. They're very energy dense. Meat tastes good because it's high fat content and like packed with protein. So mm -hmm. it, it it tastes good. We we genuinely want meat. Like we salivate when we like think of meat because you know it 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 our body is kind of hardwired to know that this is this is good for it. Mm -hmm. So I I but I I don't know whether um sort of change over time would be because of sort of your brain. Um, sort of on that level, you sort of changing what you think of as food. Um, although that would be difficult because it is so hardwired. And it's so I think that sort of change could be in part probably due to the microbes in the gut. Someone should look but into that. But just like, because I know some meats, I don't know what all of them are, but I know you like if you've been a vegetarian for a certain amount of time, you can get sick eating like a lot of meat, right? Yeah. Yeah. Does your brain like subconsciously know that? Like, or is it just? I think, um, I think that's probably to do with the, the, the culture of your gut. So, yeah. um, the, the, we think of ourselves as sort of being our own individual organism, like with, mm -hmm. with no help from anything else. But actually when you look at us very closely, there are lots of tiny, tiny, tiny little living things, um, that aren't just living on us. Mm -hmm. Um, but or, they're more sort of living with us. It's like, 
you you know the concept of a um what's it called um when two things live symbiotic relationship you know the concept of a symbiotic relationship yeah yeah, yeah. where two where two organisms live in sort of really close um sort of proximity to one another and they are in a sort of mutually beneficial relationship yeah. like for example there's some fish that live on like the underside of sharks yeah and that so they get protection from other predators and the they shark, clean the then, shark, the shark, yeah, and they clean the oh, shark. Yeah. They're like little, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah they, they eat stuff off the shark to keep yeah. it clean. Or like, um, I think uh, clownfish and anemone, anemones, where a clownfish, yes. I think, um, they, I think they protect the anemones from something, or they clean them, and then mm. anemones protect them from. Uh, I said that many times, so that yeah. messing it up, uh, and they uh, <laughs> they provide protection. Um, yeah, so that's what a symbiotic relationship is, and actually, um, in your like all of your body, there are small tiny little organisms living not just sort of with you mm -hmm. like not just like sort of on you but with you sort of thing in symbi in a sort of symbiotic relationship particularly in your gut yeah. um you if you had that makes me feel itchy i'm not gonna lie <laughs> well, honestly if you didn't have if you didn't have all of the microbes that were in your gut you wouldn't be able to digest a lot of the things that you're yeah you should be able to like that you would normally be able to digest so and the and the thing about that is is that if you obviously if you don't feed those microbes the things that they are sort of like geared up to digest, then that population is going to go down. Yeah. So I think with I think with not eating meat for a long time, I think it's the it changes your um your your gut biome. It changes the sort of uh, mm. microbes yeah. that, that exist in your gut. I found that particularly with dairy, like being off dairy for so long. Every time I've accidentally been served like real cheese, mm. it makes me feel so sick afterwards. Yeah. It's something about dairy. Well, I think um I think dairy. Well, the thing is, we're not actually really. People say we're not supposed to have dairy, but ultimately, it's very odd that we that we're so into dairy because mm. um, it is we have kind of we had I think we had to evolve to be able to digest it into adulthood yeah. because you only really have the enzymes that you need um, for breaking down um, this breaking down milk and other dairy products. Um, you only have those enzymes when you're a baby and you're drinking breast milk because that's what milk is for. It's for babies. Mm. Um, <clears throat> and so I, apparently I read, I read, um, I can't remember where I read it, but I read somewhere that apparently, um, we sort of lactose intolerance was the norm. Like we were lactose intolerant yeah. for a long, long time. Um, after we started drinking milk regularly. Mm -hmm. So there was, there was a long period of time where humans were, ha had milk as a regular part of their diet, dairy products as a regular part of their diet, but they were, uh, to some degree lactose intolerant. And I feel like so many people now, like, I, I don't know any of my friends that are like, oh, yeah, I'm completely fine uh, digesting dairy. I feel like 90% of my friends are have some kind of issue with dairy. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Apparently, I mean, I think in places like, um, I think, Japan, for example. I was just example, to say, I think I've heard about places like, I think, off the top of my head, China, where dairy is not a big part of their cuisine that often. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it's something like eighty percent of adults are lactose intolerant. Yeah, because really they, high. They should be. And yeah. the thing is, when you, when people say, "Oh, cats are lactose intolerant," or hedgehogs are lactose, yes, they're bloody animals. <laughs> of course, they're uh, lactose. Yeah, that's a bit weird. Why are you feeding a cat like cow's milk like that? Yeah, <laughs> they're not babies. Like, okay, cats yeah. are babies for life. We've like we've basically done that to them. Yeah. But um, but yeah, no um, yeah. If you're an adult, then you're. You, kind of should be lactose intolerant almost. So how is cultured meat made? Essentially what you do is you take your cells, you um, apply some enzymes to them. Uh, enzymes are um, little biological sort of proteins that help chemical reactions happen. Mm. Um, so you, you give them some enzymes to make sure that you've got stem cells. So uh, you've then got your stem cells that you've taken either from an embryo or from a fully grown animal. And you uh, pop those stem cells into a bioreactor, which is just what we call is the name that we've got for basically a big thing that that you grow stuff in. It's got it, it's got a big <laughs> stirrer in it. It's got heaters in it. It's 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 bloody brilliant. It's it, that's what a bioreactor is. It's basically a big stirry pot to grow stuff in um, that is sealed from the outside, um, and you put that in there uh, and let them. Um, what it's called proliferate and differentiate. Basically, you let them uh, grow. Uh, like a lot you let them sort of divide and make mm. more of themselves and then you let them differentiate by which i mean um turn into a specific kind of cell and so what they then do is turn into um sort of something called uh myofibers which is essentially like sort of uh essentially sort of proteins protein um sort of muscle cells 
And then you um, put them onto a sort of scaffold and you let them grow on the scaffold um, to grow into the sort of desired shape or, mm -hmm. or, or whatever that you need. And then you've got um, uh, an edible product at the end of that, at sort of the end of that process. So to sort of simplify that down, essentially what's happening is you're taking, you're, you're taking a sample of cells uh, from an animal. Mm -hmm. um, you're making sure that they're stem cells and then you're putting them in a bioreactor and letting them uh, multiply and turn into the proper kind of cell that you want, um, muscle cells essentially. Um, and then you're putting them on something uh, for them to grow more and have a have the right shape, the right mm -hmm. sort of structure that you want. And then you've basically got an edible product at the end of that. Corey, what causes the stem cells to specialize into muscle cells? Putting stem cells in a particular environment will cause them to differentiate into a particular kind of cells. Generally in the body, that's how stem cells work. Um, I don't know specifically how they're um, getting them to differentiate into these muscle cells, though. I can look is this up. anywhere near like cloning or has it like, is it? So cloning would be, cloning is much more straightforward, I think, than this. Okay. Like I, okay. We, you couldn't create a full like cow, like if this was like advanced support, like if this was like made, um, could you? Could. Like, you could. I think there's, there's easier oh. ways. This is the thing. Um, I was talking to a friend about this the other day. <laughs> no, 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 this is great. I was talking to a friend about this the other day that I think that it's really interesting the way that we think about scientific things sometimes. Yeah. So someone asked me, um, uh, someone asked me basically, uh, is there a way to take sort of raw materials and produce sort of a living thing just from those raw materials? And mm. I said, so basically, they were talking about a snake. Is there a way to, that I could like um, take raw materials, put it into this machine, and then it pops out a snake? And I said, yes, a snake. A, a snake is a snake making machine. That's what that's what you're asking <laughs> for. Um, and so, in this case, you could you could conceivably sort of like. I mean, I say conceivably, it would be incredibly complex and very difficult to grow all the individual parts that you need to make a sort of cow. Mm -hmm. When if you want to clone a cow, what you could do is just sort of. Take a, take a sample of cells, um, and basically, we we, <clears throat> we 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 went over this in our um, in our sort of Dolly the Sheep episode, our cloning attack yes. of the clones episode, episode three. But you could episode basically five. episode five. Fucking hell. Gotcha. Okay, <laughs> I thought I had it. Um, uh, so you could so you basically take you take um, you take you could take a sort of cell, and you could make a clone from that, and then you just let the clone sort of grow inside of a surrogate mother. Mm. Growing like growing a clone from like these small parts would be like so painfully tedious yeah. when you've basically got a like animals just do that themselves, you know. I'm imagining like a botched like stitched together cow, like that's just <laughs> uh, all wrong. Well, okay, you got to think this is so we're not um we're not growing like a, a cow's leg and then chopping it up into meat. What we're no, doing yeah. is we're growing the proteins that um that make up the the cow's sort of muscles fibers. And we're letting them grow on a scaffold. So we're like, um, effectively, um, you've you've got let's say a sort of, it's kind of like almost three D printing. So you're not um, you're not making a leg and then chopping it up. You're making a steak. You're you're making the indiv the tiny, the tiny individual parts of a steak. All of the sort of cells that make up a steak. What you're doing is you're like piecing them together like bits of Lego to build the steak, rather than sort of breaking down a leg. If that makes sense. But to my understanding of it, um, for God, um, it is not a. It's not. It's a very basically a very similar starting position to how you'd make a clone, because a clone would come from a, like a an embryo, and an embryo would make stem cells, and then those stem cells would would differentiate and and grow into a cow. And this is stem cells, and rather than differentiating and growing into a cow, they're differentiating and growing into a steak. Yeah, is that correct, Corey? Yeah. Basically, yeah. So it's like growing a steak. It's like if you if you could yeah. choose just to make which part of the cow rather than making a whole cow, if you could just make just the 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 the, the muscle parts of the cow, then give birth to that, you'd have a steak. <laughs> but what I'm getting from this is this seems a lot of work for like not that much reward. It seems like why not just have like a soy burger? <laughs> Right. Well, okay. Because because there's a market for it. Whoa. <laughs> like, okay. So that actually does bring me on to my next my my next sort of part is the the reason that we need this. We need it. The reason that we're making this. Um, we're going through all the effort of trying to literally grow a steak, essentially, or grow a burger or whatever. Um, is because consumers are very very uh, sort of picky. It's very very difficult to 
get people to move from meat to a meat substitute that doesn't have the same texture as meat. So that is that is the sort of main thing that, that people are trying to do, to try and get the texture of mm. meat down. And the issue with this, actually, the issue with this one um, is that, uh, to answer your question from way back when, um, is it the same as is it the same as um, is the burger the same as a sort of beef burger? No, there's a lower fat content because um, you're not you're, you're you're literally sort of growing just the muscle cells. So uh, there's a lower fat content, which could leave it to be sort of more dry. But it uh-huh. and you've also got to think about the 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 sort of the other things that create the flavor in there because obviously an animal's body is quite complex and there's lots of things going on in there and so just growing sort of one type of cell isn't necessarily mm-hmm. going to replicate that flavor but we also we already have ways of replicating sort of beefy meaty flavors uh, which we've used for other um other meat substitutes so like um in particular sort of uh, vegan burgers they've got uh, they use yeast to grow a specific protein that's found in sort of beef i think yeah. that um gives a very meaty flavor yeah, but it's similar. It it feels kind of similar to like if you ask the question like, um, well, why if the planet is dying from us using oil, why don't we just stop driving so much? And it's like, well, because people don't want to stop mm. driving, and our mm. industry is based around people driving. So, so rather than stopping the production of cars, we'll make a different type of car that <laughs> uses a different source of energy, so yeah. that you can buy the same product and it just has less of a negative impact. And if the point of veganism, the point of veganism is not ultimately really anything to do with reducing people's consumption of meat. It's reducing the suffering for the animal. So if you can create basically the same product, but it doesn't cause the suffering for the animal. Yeah. Great. It doesn't matter. Yeah. That's like it's yeah. the same product. No, most people are not going to care. There'll be like a small percentage of super weird rich people <laughs> who'll still want to have something that's been murdered or hunt something themselves. But most people are just going to go same product, slightly cheaper, better for the environment, probably subsidized by government to a certain extent. Great. I'll buy that. People love meat and they don't want to stop eating meat, but we need to try to transition away from it. However, um, the re- I said at the top of the show that this isn't necessarily as vegan as people think it is. And it's not just because we're sampling things from animals. Because mm. um, from what I've seen, the the issue is that we would still have to rear animals in order to sample their cells. I mean, okay, conceivably, at some point, we could produce, we could produce a cell line that... Um, you could produce a cell line that is functionally immortal that we just get, basically go and draw upon whenever we need to. Um, similar to HeLa cells. Uh, we've got an episode on that as well. Um, yes. Henrietta Lacks, episode number... Oh, God, it's 40-something. You can remember everything but that one. So, um, so yeah, I, I, at some point, conceivably, we could have a cell line that we that we draw upon. And basically, it's what I mean by that regard, a cell line, we basically have um, a, we basically have cells that like can live uh, pretty much forever. You can kind of like pick from them and constantly come back to those. Yeah, it's like having a basil plant in your house. You know, yeah. you mm. pick the basil plant every now and then, and it grows new leaves, and you pluck them. Episode forty-three, by the way. Thank you. Forty-three. Check. There we go. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that is that. That is um, not impossible. Not impossible, but it is certainly um, not where we're at right now. So if this were to take off, it would have to be. Um, there, there still would be suffering of animals, but that suffering would be far, far reduced. And um, yeah, here's the thing. This is this is something that I find interesting. And it's something that bothered me until I sort of was reading studies, uh, researching for this episode. The Impossible Whopper uh, from Burger King, mm. where they essentially had, um, a, it was a Burger King burger that uh, bloody, like it was entirely vegan, but then they made it not vegan by the cooking process. Yes. And yeah. the, the kind of, <laughs> The kind of point of it, and, and it's the same as the Nando's. Nando's, I found out recently, their wraps are not vegan because they, which is it's really, cooked on the same grill as the chicken. No. Oh, really? No, no, no. Um, all the 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 vegan stuff that they've got is vegan. Right. Like they've, I think there's a separate area of the grill. The wrap, the literal wrap, is not vegan because the, the they really? to make it shiny, they use um some bug extract to oh. glaze it. Oh my goodness. Which is very hidden on its webs- uh, on their website. Well, I usually go for the burger, so I feel fine. I have eaten so many Nando's wraps. <laughs> um, like every now and then I find out something I've eaten isn't vegan and I'm like, oh no, I'll remember that in the future. But I, I just yeah. don't care more. But this is the thing. That like, <laughs> and it used to really annoy me. I was like, why would you go through all the effort of making a vegan thing? Um, and Fall on the hurdle. Yeah, like not make it fully vegan so vegans can't eat it. And so people were saying to me, yeah, well this is more to sort of um, 
make meat eaters more comfortable with eating things that aren't meat. And I'm like, you can do both. You can you can make something like an option for meat eaters, but also mean that, like like mm. make it so that uh, people that are vegan can enjoy the food. I don't think the bug glaze is pulling many meats into the. It's just making the vegan rap. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I just this, this is the thing. I think that ultimately, I think that like if you can make something fully vegan, you should. But I don't think that inherently um, trying to make it easier for people to eat. Um, so I'd make it try and make it easier for people to eat sort of um, more vegan stuff is bad. I think I don't think appealing to sort of meat eaters is necessarily bad. But if you can make it vegan, make it fully vegan. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. Okay. I have a thing though. This uh, not to make everything about like what's vegan and what's not, but uh, like bugs, because that's an interesting one. Like, it's like is anything living like not considered? vegan yeah so because well it depends how small you go so vegans can eat bread because yeast well it is it's a unis it's a, a single-celled organism mm -hmm. it's a fungus that is okay it's okay to to cultivate and kill yeast probably because it's very very <clears> small <throat> um but bugs uh no usually you're allowed to use some bug labor because we need to but you're not allowed to like kill and eat bugs apart from when you know you're killing them with pesticides or you're um you're uh, getting them ground up in your peanut butter yes yeah if you like crunchy uh -huh. peanut butter by the way you've got more bugs in it than you've got uh than there are in smooth peanut butter Ooh. yeah um but this is like so there's so many like weird things like that because mm. like for example um when you're gr growing plants you're using uh like fertilizer right from yeah. cows so is the way that isn't that coming also from the meat industry in a way? Um, <laughs> again, this is the thing about byproducts. I think yeah. I think using certain byproducts is not necessarily supporting the meat industry because, again, the only reason that these the only reason that um, gelatin is everywhere in sweets is because there is a surplus of gelatin and that shit is cheap, mm -hmm. like. Like it is not, it is inexpensive because there is so much of it because we are producing so much meat and what else do you do with it? So essentially like, obviously if you're a company and you're producing some kind of, you're, you're making something by whatever process, you want to you want to maximize your profits. So you've got your main reason for doing it, which is producing, producing the meat. And then if you can make money by selling the manure, selling um, the bloody, the, the, the hooves and the bones and whatnot, then you will do that. However, if you take away that like primary source of income, manure isn't going to prop up like uh, prop up an industry like easily because it costs a lot of money to fucking make like make a cow and yeah. keep it alive, <laughs> you know? Like it costs a lot of money and just selling it like selling its leavings are not going to it's not going to like make that money back. So, yeah, I think that again, I think veganism it really for me it should be trying uh, to doing as much as is pra as like practical essentially mm -hmm. it's not practical to avoid all foods that um have been pollinated by bees that have been transported around the country <laughs> you know it's not practical to not use manure it's not practical to uh, do any number of things uh yeah so that would be that would be my answer to that question very good very good yeah so let's just quickly rush through um some of the pros and cons of this i mean here's the thing uh, issue is that um, it would still require us rearing animals for now. Um, we don't know whether it's actually cost effective or not. Right now, it's not cost effective. Mm -hmm. um, it, scaling it up, it's 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 tough. We scaling things up Wait, is always two, tough. Two hundred fifty thousand dollars isn't cost effective. Two hundred, yeah, no. <laughs> well, now I think we're now down to about uh, what is it? I think it's about maybe six hundred dollars per. Or three hundred dollars. Oh, we're getting there. Uh, no, we're get, we're we're okay. definitely getting we're definitely getting that price down. Um, the issue is as well is that a lot of these um, were grown using bovine blood serum, which is basically um, taking um, <laughs> taking blood from a uh, fetal bl uh, bovine blood serum, basically taking blood from a fetus, uh, a, a little cow fetus, and mm. using that as the nutrition to grow the cells, uh, because the cells need nutrition and not gonna lie um 
we actually use we actually use bovine um we use a lot of bovine blood serum um to, to grow a lot of things and making making a version of that um is much harder than just because you would then need to quantify like specifically all of the things in it and produce. it's very easy just to take that and use that so when we were growing them we used um an animal source so we would first have to cut out that animal sort of nutrition source mm -hmm. to make it more vegan which is possible um i think uh the scientists that were working on that have been working on these for, the, for various companies they've said that that is <clears throat> that is an, a fairly straightforward next step for them so um yeah basically one of the hurdles is making it kind of as vegan as possible reducing the amount of animals that we need to use in it and reducing um all animal products in the production process because otherwise it it's kind of if you're trying to go up against the meat industry but you're using the meat industry to help you you know make your product <laughs> it's not really gonna work um yeah so we've got to figure out obviously uh, we've got to try and scale it up and part of that is getting the bioreactor right like i said when you scale it up you've got to think about mixing because mixing changes at scale yeah you can't stir something um that is you can't you can't just stir something at the same sort of rate when it's like fits on this desk as you can when it fills up the entire room because mm -hmm. the speeds of things will change the actual the like, distance that things need to travel will change yeah um so uh, scaling things up is a little more complicated than one might initially think so that's what we're kind of trying to figure out as well there's also scaffolding like we need to like it's the, the cells need something to grow on um so you did a lovely little um soda something on soda bread mm -hmm. for Sci guys live recently which if you're a patron you can catch um you could catch that or you can check out the Sci guys live clip on youtube oh it is up there it is we talked about i talked about uh using different things as scaffolds mm -hmm. for growing meat so the typical way is using collagen mm -hmm. molding that into the shape you want and then growing the meat on that but there's also been studies where they've used bread they've managed to shape bread Wait, what is scaffolds for so it's a scaffold is essentially like a structure that you grow your cells on to give them the shape that you want want them to have. Oh, okay. Much like when you make scaffold for a, a scaffolding for a building, it's mm -hmm. so that you can build the building. Essentially, it's okay. um, not exactly a template, more like sort of uh, think of it like a skeleton to grow your stuff on. Yeah. But sometimes it can be ed like you can make it so that that scaffolding is edible and it doesn't need to be removed. Okay. And then there's also the like a big thing about this is the environmental impact. There have been different sort of um, gauges for its um, effectiveness on the environment, and those vary quite greatly. Um, in general, it tends to be, um, it tends to sort of have fewer greenhouse gas emissions and um, use up like less land than um, sort of, uh, than meats, like sort of traditional meats. Um, but the energy consumption um, of, the energy consumption in producing cultured meat is very, very high. Um, apparently from this graph I've got in front of me, um, mm. much higher than, um, beef and, uh, like, and other meats right now. However, that can all change. We're, we're at a point where we've got the sort of concept down. We just need to refine it. So getting those energy costs down, getting the sort of, um, in, in basically making the environmental impact, uh, much smaller mm -hmm. is a key thing that we need to work on, uh, right now using, um, less water as well. Um, and, the the sort of last thing I want to briefly touch on is probably one of the, like probably the biggest hardest problem to sort of overcome is selling it to consumers because again like I've said so many times people do not like things that are artificial they do not like artificial things uh, you you will see it like I think like I hear people say it all the time where they're like I'm not going veggie or vegan until the substitutes look and taste exactly like what I'm used to. Um, so yeah. entitled. Yeah, right? <laughs> until, I, until I can't distinguish it from actual chicken or actual beef. then I I'm, will not, not be vegan it. until I'm vegan accidentally and I didn't realize. <laughs> yeah. Until I don't have to notice it. Here's the thing, yeah. right? If, you, if, you're thinking, if you're thinking like, oh, I don't want to be vegan because um, I would miss meat too much, I promise you, you will feel that for a, you'll feel that for a few months. I had the mm -hmm. meat dreams for a, a few months. <laughs> The, I had the meat dreams. You had the meat dreams. Mm -hmm. It's like actual what? cravings as well. Meat dreams? Did you have that? Did you, you have, have that? No. You had the meat dreams? Really? No. I had dreams about meat. I had I dreamt about eating particular kinds of meat. Yeah. Sometimes I still dream uh, I still dream about someone offering me meat and I eat it and I'm like, oh no. <sighs> I need to rationalize it myself. Did myself. And then I wake up <laughs> and I'm like, oh wait, no. 
It's I didn't actually do it. Oh, good. Did um, you guys ever have the like worry that you would like eat meat when you were drunk or something? Because I had that, but I never did. There I did was at never the beginning, a, like, and then I never did. I even had it offered, like offered to me mm. when I was drunk. Yeah, I, like, I don't know why. Like my brain would think that I would do that, but I would never. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I mean, look, that's the thing. Uh, people that are not vegan would want meat to be sort of. Uh, if, like vegan meat to be as meaty as possible. But here's the thing. You will forget what meat is like. Like th this happens now where I get an honest burger and I, I bite into it. And I'm like, did they give me a meat one? And then yeah. I, I take it to someone. I'm like, hey, can you try this and tell me if it's meat? And they're like, this is obviously not meat. And I'm like, it's been years. <laughs> it's literally, I have not had meat for like half a decade. I genuinely don't remember what it is like enough discern fake meat from real meat yeah whereas someone that is eating meat regularly is like yeah okay of course of course that's different. i will buy i will buy something from like the veggie section like fully only veggie section i will like start to cook it and then i will have to like pick up the packaging from the trash and be like wait yeah <laughs> like so for some reason it's still this like in my mind that i'm like somehow i got the wrong packaging and this is the wrong thing but it's probably not even close. No, I mean, the thing, yeah, like the actual, it's not close, but you just forget because you've mm -hmm. not had it. So if you're one, if your main gripe is, oh, why would you have meat substitutes when they're not exactly like meat? Because they're, you won't, like, you won't be eating, like, I, I have this chicken, this, like, this isn't chicken, right? I was right? just thinking about this. And I, and I have that and I, I'm eating it and I'm like, this is great. And I don't really care that it's not real chicken. It's mm -hmm. good. I like it, and it it fills the same sort of hole. I was going to recommend that actually. If if you if you are someone who would miss chicken, get this isn't chicken because mm. that's like the closest <laughs> thing I've ever tasted. Yeah, chicken. and this isn't chicken. Th this isn't bacon as well. Yeah, like the, the fact is that if you really really want meat substitutes that are very much like meat, you can find a lot of them. But ultimately, like, just don't eat meat for a while, and you'll kind of you'll kind of forget what it's like. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. like if you don't eat bananas for a while and then start eating like banana flavored sweets. You'd be like, mm. oh yeah, this is what bananas taste yeah. like, you know? Oh, but that is, so, yeah, go on. Um, is the issue kind of that first people are like, oh, but I won't eat it until it tastes like me. And then they're like, oh, but I won't eat a lab grown thing. Well, I think- So it's like two barriers to get past. Yeah, I think first off, you need to make it as meat-like as possible. So right now, th th that's what the lab grown meat problem is. That's what lab grown meat is trying to solve. That yeah. problem of like, it needs to be as meat-like as possible. So lab grown meat is- meat it is literally uh it is literally just like <laughs> muscle cells from an animal um but the issue is yeah that it's it's artificial and people don't like artificial stuff there's also the issue of like you know need to add fats fats back into it and whatnot to make it sure it cooks uh, correctly but yeah that is the main hurdle to get over the fact that consumers just do not enjoy eating things that aren't that are deemed sort of unnatural that's why you mm -hmm. see um such a uh, like that's why you see organic stuff being sort of like pushed and people like wanting to eat organic, people avoiding GMOs, mm -hmm. despite the fact that literally- if That seems like a, the weirdest scam, like- <laughs> It's ridiculous. If you've seen a bloody wild <laughs> strawberry, do you think the strawberries that you eat now are anything like a wild, no. They're tiny, aren't they? Yeah, they're tiny little they're like things. They're like teeny tiny. Teeny tiny, like teeny, like as yeah. in normal strawberry is this size, right? Like <laughs> that's like a, on an average. Yeah, wild strawberries like this. Oh They're tiny little things, almost. Nothing They're very similar. good though. Great, yeah. But uh, this is nothing the thing. like a real strawberry. It just yeah, it just bothers me that people think that oh GM like uh, GMO means bad, and it's like we've literally bred everything, all of our food to be different than it weren't, is naturally. Weren't carrots like purple or something? Used to say like white. Yeah, I remember. Like natu like natural, like change the doesn't color. To change the color just because we like the orange color better. Exactly. So, <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of that's kind of an overview on like lab grown meat. Essentially, uh, you're you're taking cells from an animal and you're growing them in a big mixing vat uh, to and and like putting them on a scaffold and then you've boom you're, you've grown yourself a steak. Um, and there are some issues right now, particularly essentially trying to get the process nailed down perfectly so that we can scale up production to produce enough to feed a, a large sort of chunk of the population. Um, also trying to get it to be actually properly vegan because right now it's not really very vegan at all. Mm -hmm. um, and also sort of um, it, it lessening the environmental impact, cutting costs, all of all of that stuff is are sort of hurdles that we need to get over. And hopefully we'll be doing another episode on this um, not too long from now. Yeah. We'll have, we'll have solved all those problems. But... Yes. 
that is that. It is now time for my favorite part <gasps> of the show. It's time for the quick fire quiz. Yay! Do, 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 do. So, regard, what? do not worry. The quick fire quiz is very simple. I will ask one question between all three of you. The first person to buzz in with an with a correct answer, not just with an answer, with a correct <laughs> answer, will win. But I must finish asking the question before you can buzz in. Okay. That's everything, right? Those are all the rules. That's it. That sums it up pretty well. <laughs> yeah, pretty good. So don't worry, Vigard. Um, it's going to be very, very easy. So, Jamp, what is your I'm buzzer? just going to call a connection issue if there's like, uh, if I don't win. <laughs> I'm going to be like, no, but there's the delay. It's <laughs> Look, honestly, I that full respect for you if you do that. Uh, Jamp, what's your buzzer? <laughs> Moo. <laughs> Sticking on the animal theme. <laughs> Luke, what's your buzzer? Don't kill me! <laughs> Sticking on the animal. Well, that's thing. a long one. You're going to struggle getting that in first. <laughs> just a scream. Just a scream. Um, <laughs> Vigard, uh, Vigard, what is your buzzer? Just the clap. <laughs> I don't know. It's the sound of uh, someone putting two burger buns together. Yes. Ready to eat some meat. <laughs> two vegan An empty burgers. burger bun. <laughs> just the buns. <laughs> I'm having it without meat because I'm vegan. <laughs> <laughs> so, my question to you all is. What type of cell is used to make ah. lab grown meat? <laughs> Jack, you let me finish my question. Luke, you oh. cut me off. Incredibly I was trying to wait, but I was just hearing screaming. <laughs> <laughs> Stem cells. Stem cells. Ding, ding, ding. That is correct. Well done, Jamp. You win this week's quick fire quiz. Thank you. For your winnings, nothing. Nothing. No wins anything. Oh, that was it. I thought there was more questions. No, it's just one. <laughs> it's just one. <laughs> one and done. That's it. Honestly, look. I, mean, I was like quick sitting ready to clap point. again. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if we had more than one question, it would be too much. Already, I think. Yeah. There would be like, lots of screaming and mooing. And, yeah. Um, and yeah. clapping. But that is it for this week's episode. Anything else you guys want to say? Uh, go vegan. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> the guards? Anything? And, uh, I think watch the vegan teacher for education. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> She's gonna come um, after us. She's she gonna come is. after us. She's gonna do a video. On oh, us I can. TikTok. Yeah. Where can they find you, Vigard? Um, everywhere on social media. It's just it's Vigard, and uh, on YouTube, just Vigard. Before we go, we'd like to thank all of our patrons with a very special thanks to executive producer Ashley Muller. And also, thank you for watching. You'd, you can find the full references for this episode in the description. Subscribe for new episodes every Sunday. And why not leave us a nice wee comment? You can support the pod at patreon.com forward slash guys, Or you can find a contact us at SciGuysPod on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok too. Or you can send us an email at SciGuysPod at gmail.com. You can follow me <laughs> at NotCar everywhere. You can follow me at Jamkin everywhere. Do not come to my house. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's Vagard. Goodbye. Everywhere, basically. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>